Hello and welcome to the CBT Nuggets Micro Nugget entitled Scratch Programming Designing Multi State Buttons. My name is Tim Warner. Buttons provide an excellent way for users to navigate your Scratch project. For instance, I have a mental math trainer that I've developed as part of a larger CBT Nuggets training series on Scratch programming. And the way the buttons work is that the user has, let me start the project formally, one click access to a help screen, as you see here, and then a way back to the home page, and then they can play the game. Now I want you to watch the button carefully when I click it. You'll notice that the button changes state briefly. That gives the user some visual feedback that something is happening with the button. It's a really nice touch. And I want to show you how easy it is to create those buttons. To do that, I'm going to create a new empty scratch project. I'll move the scratch cat off to the side for now. And we'll want to create a couple sprites. Now, if you are an artist, you can click Paint New Sprite and you can create your buttons from scratch, pun intended. However, I'm going to go to the middle button down in the New Sprite area and we can browse into the Scratch Media folder under Costumes, Things, and there's actually one and only one set of buttons here. And you'll notice that one has a lighter color than the other. This is again meant to denote the state change inherent in buttons. So I'll select this guy. And in order to make it larger, I'll come up here to Grow Sprite, click that button, hover over the button, and I'm just repeatedly clicking my mouse to make the button grow each time I click it, okay? I can come over here into the scripts area, left click to make that go away. To change the look and feel or provide a label for the button, we can go to the Costumes tab. I'm also going to name this sprite. I'll call it My Button and press enter. I'm going to call this initial costume upstate to denote that this is the default state of the button. If I click edit here, we can use the text control. I'm going to make this much smaller, maybe 12 points, and I'll just say click. Try to center the text as much as possible and click OK. Now, to bring in another costume as easily as possible to match size and all that good stuff, I'm going to import that other sprite by clicking New Costume Import, button pressed, OK. I want to verify that they're the same size pixel-wise, which they are, but I'll have to double left click and add in my 12-point label manually. I haven't found a way to automate this. If you can think of a way or if you can discover a way, let me know. I'm more than willing to learn. And we can toggle the costumes. It looks like I'm not perfect with the placement of the word click here. I made it reasonably good at any rate. And I'm going to change this copy to downstate. Now, as far as the code goes, let's go over to control. Normally, we will add a hat block for when the user starts the application with the green flag. I want to make sure that the state of the button is always going to reset to upstate. So we'll do looks switch to costumes upstate. Another thing we may want to consider is when the user clicks the button on this page we might switch the background and we want that button to disappear. To do that we can use the hide block from the looks area and then when the user comes back home we want this click button to reappear so explicitly we can make sure that when the user starts the application it explicitly shows the button. Now how I usually go from here is using broadcast messages. So under control note that we have a hat block that looks for when the user clicks the my button sprite. This determines what happens when that occurs, right? So first of all we want to change the costume to downstate. And we can test this right along by starting the script and note that when I click the button it changes the state. Now it doesn't reset at all. We could easily do that just for debugging or testing purposes. I'm going to bring out a wait one second and then we will go to looks, switch to custom, upstate. Let's see how that works. Let's start the script, click, wait a second, and then it goes back up. You see what I mean? So from where you go to here is completely up to you. Like I said, I tend to use messages a lot. So under control, we could have when the button is clicked, instead of waiting and switching its costume back, we can have it broadcast a message. And we can call that message anything we want to on the fly, as you see here, my message. And then whatever we want to happen, again, the sky's the limit, we would just set another control block on that machine, or, or on that sprite rather, Rather, such that when it receives my message, what do you want to have happen? So there you have it, friends. Those are the basic mechanics of using multi-state buttons in Scratch projects. I hope that you found this informative, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.